hope you guys enjoyed the first video in my question and answer segment. For those of you that asked the questions that I answered, I hope that you were satisfied with my answers. Um, if not, you can ask the question again and I'll try to answer it more fully. Um, and I'm excited for all the questions that I got. I've gotten a lot of great ones and I'm looking forward to answering them. So without further ado, here's some more. Um, Nicole asked, why does Kate call you Stu? Um, we have got this question, gotten this question so many times and there's a really not interesting story about it. Um, it Stu was like some weird combination of multiple nicknames that she was calling me at the time. And I think we were in Florida. We were somewhere on vacation. I think it was Florida. And she was trying to wake me up. Um, I had fallen asleep in the car because I'm like narcoleptic. Actually, I'm not anymore, but I used to be basically narcoleptic in the car. As soon as I get in the car, I would fall asleep. Um, so I'd fallen asleep driving somewhere and she tried to wake me up and Stu accidentally came out of her mouth and she thought it was the most hilarious thing and started calling me from then on. And that was about eight years ago. Um, she introduces me to everyone as Stu. Uh, everyone in my family except my mom and my brother. So just my dad, my sister, and my brother-in-law call me Stu. Um, all of Kate's friends, her clients, like everyone knows me as Stu. And so when they meet me, they're like, uh, I don't know if I'm supposed to call you Lauren or Stu. I remember when I met Carrie of um, Caroline G and or Chasing Big Dreams. She was like, I don't know what to call you. And then I met Keisha of Coconut Robot recently and Kate had like threatened her. Like, if you don't call her Stu, we're not going to be friends. Maybe not that extreme. But she did threaten her and tell Keisha that Keisha had to call me Stu. So when we met, she, she obliged Kate, which was nice. Um... But yeah, it's just such a weird nickname and it's been stuck around for like eight years and I have a feeling that my nephew will call me Aunt Stu. And that's just, I've just accepted it. It's my fate. So yeah, there's not really a good story, but that's kind of it. So the next question is, you seem to refer to Kate as Shorty in a teasing, loving way. Just how tall are you and Kate? This comes from, I think it's Macy, Maisie maybe. Um, Kate is, I think she's 5'4". If you asked her, she'd say 5'5", five five, but I'm pretty sure she's 5'4". Um, I'm 5'6", so I'm really not that much taller than her, but uh, for years, people always thought that I was, well, people always thought that we were twins, and if we weren't twins, they always thought that I was the older one because I was taller, am taller than her. Um, so we're not that tall, but she's shorter than me, so, you know, got to make fun of her for something, right? The next question comes from Annalise or Annalise, either one. Um, she asks, can I wear cognac colored boots with black leggings or with a black dress? I say yes. Um, some people will cringe at this answer because they still believe that black and brown cannot be worn together. Um, I don't believe in that notion. I think you can wear black and brown together. Um, in fact, I have seen a lot of things in stores this fall, like sweaters or boots that have both black and brown in them or on them. So I say yes, wear your black and brown. I like it. Um, I think if you're wearing an all black outfit or if you're wearing a lot of black, I think adding brown kind of softens it a little bit because black can be kind of harsh. Um, and kind of the other way around, if you're wearing brown, people I guess people don't really wear brown very much, but if you're wearing brown, like brown pants, um, I think try it with black shoes or black boots and it'll break up the brown and it's not so matchy-matchy, especially if you're doing um, if you're trying to match brown and brown, they kind of have to be the same shade of brown, which can be difficult to do. So to avoid that trouble, try mixing it with black and seeing how that goes. So I say yes, Annalise, go for it. Wear your cognac with your black leggings and or with a black dress. I think it looks good. I do it all the time. The next question comes from Kat, and she asked, how are you controlling your psoriasis? Um, for those that don't know, I do have psoriasis on my scalp. Um, and I'm not really controlling it. Um, I'm fortunate enough at this point in my life to only have it on my scalp. It hasn't spread anywhere else. Um, so I use a, um, psoriasis shampoo about once or twice a week, which has helped a lot, um, just in controlling the dryness and the, the itchiness and the other symptoms from it. Um, but I don't do anything other than that. I know a lot of people have had success with um, changing their diet or using certain oils, things like that. 
I haven't gotten to a point where I need to look into those options because the shampoo um, works well enough at this point. So that's all I do. Um, it dries out my hair, so I do use a lot of conditioner with it, a lot of my, my own conditioner that I use with the shampoo, but um, I've had pretty good success with it. So that's really what I do for now. The next question is, how do you keep up with all the cat hair? Um, this, I don't have a good answer for it because I don't really keep up with all the cat hair. Um, there's cat hair everywhere. Uh, so I have, I guess my like tips are, I vacuum often, um, just because I don't like walking around with cat hair all over my bare feet because it's kind of gross. Um, I have lint rollers pretty much everywhere around the apartment. Um, and I, I carry one in my purse as well if I race out the door and realize that I have cat hair all over myself. Um, because I don't need everyone in the world to know that I'm a crazy cat lady, just the people that I choose to tell, like you guys. Um, so lint rollers are a lifesaver, vacuuming, and brushing the cats. I don't brush them as often as I could, um, but that helps. They, it's always kind of a hassle because they like fight with the brush and think it's a game. And I'm like, no, I'm trying to get rid of all your hair. Uh, so that's kind of what I do. I don't, if you have some sort of secret magic weapon to use against cat hair, please let me know. Uh, but there's no secrets coming from this end. Laura asked, do you have any recommendations for anti-aging products? Um, I don't. That would probably be a better question for my sister. Um, and she most likely has already addressed it somewhere on her blog. Um, in terms of how I care for my skin, uh, I am always using SPF um, in the summer, or if I know I'm going to be in the sun for a while, I use at least SPF 30. Um, and I also use a moisturizer and BB cream that have SPF built in for the winter and like fall because you can still get sun damage even though it's cold outside. Um, so other than that, I don't do anything for anti-aging. I'm sure I could. Uh, but I, I do wash my face twice a day and moisturize um, very often, uh, especially now that it's winter because my skin is getting really dry. So that's all I do. Um, again, I think my sister maybe will have a better answer, so you can go to her blog, thesmallthingsblog.com, and search under there for anti-aging, and she probably has something under there for you. So oh, I got a lot of questions about um, my financial situation, which I was kind of surprised by it. I didn't realize people would be interested in that. Um, and basically people just want to know how I afford my life, um, which is a fair question. And I maybe would wonder it as well if I didn't know it about myself. <laughs> uh, so how do I afford my life? Um, I have been blessed with the opportunity to have both my blog and jewelry business um, make up what would be about a full-time starting salary at a, a job. Um, so that has been wonderful. Um, I never expected to be a business owner, to be a blogger, to make jewelry. None of this was expected. And I think, um, I don't know, I just think it's really cool to be in the position that I'm in because I didn't, I really didn't plan for it. Um, so I consider myself really blessed. I think God has really, um, just kind of opened my eyes to things that I didn't realize that I enjoyed and passions that I didn't realize that I have had through these opportunities. So I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for that. Um, in terms of how I afford my life, so that kind of answers your question without telling you how much money I make, because that's kind of weird. Um, I, there's not really a graceful way to answer these questions, unfortunately. Um, so in terms of that, people also wondered how I live in Chicago and don't, work a traditional full-time job, um, I would think that that kind of answered your question, but I also, um, once I decided that I was going to be moving to Chicago for sure, I started saving up a lot of money because I knew that it was going to be a lot more expensive than I was used to. Um, so I had quite a bit of savings when I moved here, which has been, that was probably the best decision I've made. Um, so I, I've been a lot less stressed financially than I would have been if I had not saved up. Um, other than that, I I just, I don't know. I, I, it's 
I just make money and I spend it um, on things that I need to spend it on. I, I have my like savings and my life sort of expenses and then I have um, what I call kind of fun money that I spend on clothes or going out to eat and things like that. Um, a lot of people asked how I fund my passion for fashion. I think that was how someone worded it. Um, and how I do that is, uh, one, I shop at a lot of stores like Target, Old Navy, TJ Maxx, Marshalls, um, outlet stores, things like that that have lower prices than traditional retail stores. Um, not to say that I don't spend money there, but it is I, I would be in a much different financial position if I was shopping at Nordstrom and J. Crew and Banana Republic all the time than I am because I shop at stores with lower prices. Um, I also, I, I know myself well enough now that I know that I, I enjoy shopping and um, I enjoy being able to add to my wardrobe um, frequently and buying new things, new tops, new pants, things like that. So. I prefer to spend, you know, twelve ninety nine or on a on a top from Marshalls or twenty seven ninety nine on a pair of jeans from Target than buying a hundred pair of jeans from Nordstrom because I know that probably in a couple months I'll be looking for another pair of jeans because I'll want something different and I'll get sick of wearing the same thing. Um, so I I kind of sh I shop consciously that way. Um, I don't I don't I. I feel like uncomfortable spending more than $50 on one piece of clothing. Um, so I do that and, and that allows me to have money to spend on other things and it allows me to buy things more frequently. So it may look like I'm shopping all the time and buying a lot of new things, but um, when I am, I'm not spending nearly as much money as maybe you think. Um, Someone specifically asked about how I afford my purses, jewelry, things like that. Um, I love buying purses. I've always loved buying purses. Um, so I kind of factor that into my clothes budget. Um, so I don't spend as much money on clothes if I know that I want a new purse. Um, and I, I, I would rather spend a couple hundred dollars on a great handbag than a couple hundred dollars on a pair of jeans because I know that A, I'm going to use a handbag every single day and B, I, I like to buy styles that will either endure through all the seasons or will last for a few falls or a few winters, things like that. Um, so I buy, I, I don't buy a lot of really trendy handbags or jewelry. Um, I buy more classics in that department, whereas I buy maybe more trendy clothing because I know that it'll turn over next season and I only spent 20 bucks on a top so I don't feel bad buying a new one in a couple months. Whereas if I spent $100 on a top, I would want to wear it every single day to get my value out of it. Um, so I hope that makes sense. Uh, so and, and shoes as well. Um, I shop at like DSW or Marshalls. I buy most of my shoes at Marshalls, TJ Maxx and DSW and Target. Um, I just, I don't know, I can't bring myself to pay full price for things like that because I know it's going to change so quickly. Uh, so that's how I afford my life. I also, um, I just know that I like to shop, so that's what I spend my money on. I I don't deprive myself, but I, I just don't spend money on going out to eat because I know that I'll want to go shopping or I'll know, I know that I'll walk into TJ Maxx and just want to buy something. Um, for those that seem to be a little concerned that I have like a shopping addiction, I think I'm still good. I think I'm still on like the, the okay side of it. Um, I do enjoy shopping a lot, but I by no means put um, any sort of like value in it. I know that all of these things are very fleeting and, and I think that's why I feel okay spending my money on it because um, it, doesn't, it doesn't mean anything to me other than I get a new top that I get to wear. Um, so. I just don't mind spending my money on it. That's I, I know some people have a really hard time spending a certain amount of money on something and I just, on like a piece of clothing or something, and I just don't because I know I'll use it. Um, so that's how I afford my life. I don't, that was kind of a long extended answer. Um, and again, I don't, there's, it's not really a graceful way to answer it. Um, but I 
I do afford my life okay at this point. And I realize that that it may not be the case forever. And if and when I get married, if and when I have kids, my spending habits will change drastically. And I'm okay with that. Um, but for now, in the stage of life that I'm in where I'm, I'm only taking care of myself, um, I get to choose what I do with my money. And um, I kind of like the freedom in that. So I've been doing that. So the last question that I will do um, in this video is, it comes from Mallory. Um, she asked, can you talk about tips for selling your clothes on Instagram, like the basics, getting started, organizing payments and shipping, anything else that's helpful? Um, I'm definitely not an expert selling my clothes on Instagram. I have done it, um, and it's been pretty successful, and I, I enjoy doing that because I, I like that I can send my clothes off to a new home. Um, in terms of tips, I think what's nice to do is to create a separate Instagram account for people to shop your closet. Um, that way people can choose to follow it or not, because if you do it on your personal account, you might flood people's feeds and that's just kind of annoying. Um, so create a separate account. Um, in terms of pricing, I just, I, if I can remember what I spent on the item, I definitely do less than 50% unless it's like fairly new and very lightly used. Um, if it's kind of beat up, I don't charge very much. If I got it from like Old Navy, I usually would just charge shipping because I probably paid seven bucks for it anyways. Um, so pricing is kind of on you, but you also have to consider that the item has been worn, so people aren't going to pay full price for it. Um, in terms of organizing payments and shipping, all I do is invoice people, um, send them a PayPal invoice and have them pay it. And then as soon as the payment comes through, I will ship it to them. I ship within three business days. Um, if, if you can do that, I think that's great because when, usually when people buy something, they want it like that second. So, um, I, I do try to stick to shipping within three business days once I receive payment confirmation. Um, other than that, I don't really have any tips. Um, it's very straightforward. Take good pictures. Um, if it needs a um, description, try to provide as detailed of a description as possible. So that's kind of it. There's, there's really no trick or magic to it. Um, that is what I have done and it's worked well for me. So. Um, if you, Mallory, if you have specific questions, feel free to email me um, if I didn't answer your question. Uh, but other than that, I think it's pretty straightforward and it's very easy and it's a really nice way to get rid of some clothes and um, give other people a chance to have the things that you liked and wore or didn't really like and you accidentally bought and couldn't return it because of return policy, um, which has happened to me a couple times, which is unfortunate. But um, yeah, so those are my suggestions for that. So those are all the questions I'm going to answer today. Um, I hope that if it was one of your questions that I answered the question well for you. Um, if I didn't, please feel free to send me an email or leave a comment. Um, if this sparked any questions for you, again, leave a comment, send me an email, tweet me, do whatever. Um, I would love to answer your questions and I've, I've really enjoyed um, seeing what you guys are interested in. Uh, it's It's been fun for me to kind of dive into these things and and get a little more personal with you guys. So I appreciate you watching and asking questions and I would love for you to submit a question if there's something burning inside of you that you just have to know. Um, and I look forward to answering some more in the future.